Hello everyone, welcome to the Splendor tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do an advanced four corner pin. You can get the source footage that I'm using from Hollywood Camera Works and I'll put a link in the description. And first of all, what is four corner pinning? It's when you have a rectangular plane in your video, like a video screen or a picture frame, and you track the four corners of that plane to replace uh, what's to be seen in that plane in, uh, and copy all the perspective distortion. Let's head into Blender. First of all, let me catch the footage into the RAM. And you can see that I have already tracked three of the four corners. They were pretty simple tracks because it's basically just set a tracker and I've set it to the previous frame setting. You can find that under match keyframe. I've set it to match previous frame. And why do I call this advanced corner tracking or corner pin? Because as you can see right here around frame 30 or so, the fourth corner of the frame uh, of the plane is covered up for a couple of frames by this hand. And then when he moves back, it gets covered up again. So we need to trick a little to get the data of that last corner. One, uh, uh, one thing I have to say about the footage. The footage is not doesn't have a one by one pixel aspect ratio. So when you load it up, you will probably see some strange things happening. Um, the image will look pretty, well, squished somewhat. And to fix that, you can go into camera data. I can show you, I guess, if the standard uh, is, the standard is the aspect ra pixel aspect ratio set to one, and you see it looks all wrong. So for this video, you have to set it to 1.5. And then it all looks okay. Now let's track the fourth corner. Control left click to set a marker and Set it here, and I'm only going to track the green channel because, well, the computer screen is green, so the contrast is maximum in this channel. As before, I'm going to set to previous frame, but since I know that the hand will cover up this corner around frame 30, I will only track 30 frames. Let's lock that by pressing L so the marker is always seen in the center and Control T to track forward. This looks quite good up to this point. And now if I press Alt and right arrow, I can track a single frame more and the next frame it will be covered up. So what do we do now for the next frames? Well, this f we could try to have a complete, instead of just location, to do a perspective track and cover up the whole computer screen, but with such a big marker, it would take forever to track. So an easier solution is, we see the corner up here is on the same plane and roughly uh, on the same plane in space as the corner down here and moves uh, the movement is roughly the same so if we select this marker down here 
and press G and G again, we can see we can move the tracker and the search area, but this little cross down there, which marks where the empty would be placed when we reconstruct the scene, stays at the corner. So if we line that up with the corner up there and we press Alt uh, right arrow to track one frame, we can see that the marker down there stays in place. And here we have our tracking point back. So we press G and G again. Remember to press it twice. And we move our search area back into place where it was. And we press We will have to refine that maybe because it slid a little bit out of that corner. But okay, let's move it back. It stays roughly in the right place. There's a little jump there. Let me just see here. here. And I can see if I zoom in, there's still a little bit of a jump that's too big. If you it's always nice to check out these curves that are shown to measure if there's some jump that's too big. And I go to this frame and that's where our jump is. Not this and smooth it out a little. And that looks okay to me. It seems to be staying on this corner fairly well. And now let's see when does this corner get covered up again. Around frame, let's say 170. So we're at frame 80. Let's track. 130 frames that should work without problem let's play it back okay we get to this frame without problem let's go frame by frame to see where the problems start and i guess yes from here on And again, for a couple of frames, press G, G again. Move this up there. And Alt right arrow lets you track frame by frame until you have your data back and it was sliding quite a bit again, so it's still in place here. Just try to smooth out. Can always look at one of those to see. There should be 
the red line should be fairly straight and it isn't so Play this back just to see how it stays in place. That looks okay to me. And now let's track the rest of it. And we should see, if we play this back, that the marker stays in place fairly well. A little bit of a jump there. Mm. Let's see if I can smooth this out, out even further. Nope. Now select all of these markers and under plane track set create plane track. Then on the first frame you adjust this plane track so that it covers up the computer screen. And you can see this plane track keeps following the computer screen. And we can use this plane track in the compositor. I can remain, rename this to screen. And now if we hit, if we go over to the compositor, check use nodes and backdrop. We don't want a render layer. We import a movie clip. That's the movie clip of the laptop right here. We scale it as usual to the render size. Connect that. And if it's scaled to the render size, um, what have I set as render size even? It's a 16 by 9, so. And because we stretch the image before uh, while tracking, we set the aspect ratio. If we set input the, where was it? Um, my track position input. First of all, let me get the images that I want. Are these the ones? Yes. And there are... How long is that frame sequence? 250. Set it to image sequence frames 250. Auto refresh and just to be sure, cyclic and input. 
ask value Where was the plane track node again? Ah, the start plane track deform. So again, it's under the start, the last one. You input this image, you select the movie clip that you had, and camera object and the screen as a track. And now you can see We have the data right here, and if we alpha over that image here, the image there, and it doesn't match up. Why? Because it should match up. Well, the the original images is if I stretch it out with the correct. Um, pixel aspect ratio is actually full HD so full HD should take care of this no that's somewhat strange then I guess we have to scale this as well I'm just not Yes, that did it. We have to scale the plane track deformed image to our render size as well. And you can see if I put in some frames, the image stays where the computer screen should be. And that's exactly what we want. Now, of course, we would have to do a green screen key to separate the hand and reintroduce it over the background. But I'm not going to show you that today because it's not that complicated. And the topic of this tutorial was for corner pin. So I hope you found this helpful and happy blending goodbye see you next time